Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is September the 6th. It is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. My gosh, the season is just flying by. Tomorrow is Labor Day, which is absolutely crazy. Um, I am Pastor Marianne Kellenbach, pastor at Living Faith Church, which is located in the community of tradition in the city of Port St. Lucie, Florida. And we continue now for the next few weeks with our virtual worship service. So I am thrilled that you are all able to join us this morning for worship. We begin with the call to worship. Listen. The Lord calls out to us, offering life. Teach, lead, turn us to your ways, O God. Walk in the paths of God's commandments with delight. Teach, lead, turn us to your ways, O God. With our whole heart, we will turn to you and live. Let us begin our time together with confession. Amid the countless things that human beings cannot fully comprehend about God, there stands this. God so loves us as to bathe us with grace and feed us with mercy and forgive us our sins. Confident in the love of God, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Lord God, while we were still slaves to sin, you died for our salvation. Yet we still worship the false gods of the world forgetting that you are Lord. Loving worldly wealth, we have not loved you with our whole heart, nor loved our neighbors as ourselves. Trusting worldly strength, we have not trusted your word, nor followed the word made flesh. Living by worldly norms, we have not shown mercy to others as you have shown mercy to us. Forgive us yet again, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Hear these gracious, wonderful, life-giving words of forgiveness. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose ways are far beyond our understanding, help us to trust your judgments so that we may do your will by loving you and loving one another. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our gospel this morning is the gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is speaking now. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, Tell it to the church, and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
Well, I welcome not only those viewing from Living Faith Church, but also those who are gathered together in their homes um, at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Boca Raton. Over this next four weeks in this month of September, we will get to have uh, an opportunity to hear God's word and to hear God's message um, together. So welcome! And what a scripture we have to begin our time together with. Um, I want to start with the very beginning where it says, if another member of the church sins against you, oh my gosh, does that happen? Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. Point out the fault. Isn't that a lovely way of saying confront? Because that's really, in some of the translations, it's about confronting the other, confrontation, confrontation. Now, I don't know how you grew up, but in my home, um, and many of you know I am from New York, from Long Island, but in my home, believe it or not, I know I am a New Yorker, but believe it or not, I was taught that confrontation was not becoming of a young lady. That's what I was taught that you don't confront the other, that you don't point these things out. Of course, nobody explained to me, well, if I don't do that, how do I deal with this pain that I am suffering? What do I do with it? Where do I take it? Yes, I take it to the Lord, but where else do I take it? Because this really hurts and it's very painful. Well, What I learned, as I dare say some of you else may have learned, you take it elsewhere. You take it everywhere but to the person who hurt you. Because confrontation, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's not what a polite young lady does. So what do we do? Well, we go and tell everybody else what that person has done to us. Now, I think if we haven't done it, which, come on, let's be real, we have done it, right? We've gone to others instead of directly to the person, but we certainly know what it feels like when someone talks about something that we did and they go and tell everybody else but us. So, number one, we're taught, go tell everybody else. Do not confront that person, but make sure you let everybody else know how hurt you are. Because when we're hurt, we're looking for sympathy, aren't we? We want someone to kiss our boo-boo like our mommies or our daddies did, or whoever was in our family to help us feel good. And so we'll go and tell other people about what had happened to us because we want to be right and justified that yeah, you should feel that way, and how dare that person do that? Now, when I was growing up, we didn't have social media. Instead, we had the street. We'd go out, whoever was out in the street, you would make sure that all your friends knew what that other kid did to you. As we grew up, I don't know about how it was for you, but before social media, email, IMing, instant messaging, of course, now we call it texting. But before that, if we worked in offices, we had the water cooler, right? There's the water cooler conversation. And you certainly know if you're the one being talked about, because when everybody's gathered around the water cooler, chit-chatting away, and all of a sudden you show up, there's an awkward silence or they leave. And if it wasn't the water cooler, because we would talk about water cooler conversation, then it was the break room, right, where the coffee pot was. And when smoking became no longer acceptable in the office, can you imagine where people were smoking in the office? Then it was smoke break time. And when you saw a particular person who was the gossip go out for a cigarette, I can tell you all the smokers would go, and even those that didn't smoke. Because they all wanted to hear what was going on. Now we have social media. So not only do we tell everybody 
what has happened, we blast it out. We blast it out on Facebook or whatever else is being used, Instagram, whatever, Twitter. We tell everybody what has been done to us, except for the person who hurt us. I don't think that that is the right type of behavior and Jesus confirms it right here. And yet we still continue to do it. That is the sinful part of us. So what does Jesus say? Jesus says, you know what, confrontation? It's not what you think it is. It is not about being right. It's not about um, nourishing um, or nurturing uh, this, this separation. No, this is what it is. It's about reconciliation. Reconciliation, because that is exactly who God is. And so it says, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. Go directly to the person who has hurt you. I can remember the first time a friend of mine confronted me about something. I didn't even realize what I had said had hurt this person. And we were in the car together, the two of us, driving for a spa day. And she was sharing something that was painful to her. And I said something back that didn't realize that what I had said had hurt her because it wasn't the intention. And she immediately said to me, did you intend to hurt me? Because that was very painful and that really hurt. And that just stopped me, stopped me, right like from saying the next thing. And a part of me wanted to get defensive, but I didn't because I listened to what she said. And that's the second thing that Jesus says here. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. See, on our end, those that of us that are confronted need to listen to what's being said and not become the victim and then make the person who we hurt the victim. And I said to her, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. I had no intention. I was just pointing out the, how ironic and how crazy this situation is. And she said, oh, okay, I just, wanted, I just wanted to make sure because that really hurt me. And I said, I'm sorry. We never talked about it again. Now, I could easily have festered that and took, taken it to everybody but her. But no, Jesus gives us this formula. When it is a safe environment, you are to go and confront that person. Some sins are so egregious that you may not be able to confront that person. So you have to know the context in which you are to do this. So that's the first thing that Jesus says. And what happens if that person doesn't listen to you? Well, Jesus goes on. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. Reconciliation has happened. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. This is not a trial that Jesus is talking about here. It's that sometimes when we are confronted, our defenses do go up. And we're not listening. And if we bring someone else with us, that person can listen to both sides and help to bring the two sides together and saying, I think I know what you're hearing, but I don't think that's what this person is saying. We know how that one goes too, right? We need someone to step in and be the mediator. Here's one of the most important things. The most important thing is that Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. And we talk about that as it relates to virtual worship, where two or three are gathered. But placed in this context, we understand what it means. It means when the two people come together to bring to light a hurt, a sin, a transgression, Jesus is there. 
Jesus is present. The Holy Spirit is listening to our conversation. We need to remember that. Even if we blast out ugliness out on to the Facebook or to the internet, Jesus is present on the internet. We're Christians. We know how to reconcile because that is what God is all about. Our Creator is merciful and gracious. I say to a fault, because if we really understand what grace is, it's offensive. But that's not for me to decide. We have a gracious God, a gracious God who focuses on reconciling us to God through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Our sinful self is put to death and we rise anew. Do we continue to sin? Yes, we're human. Yet at the same time as Lutherans, we understand we are saints because of what Christ has done for us. 100% sinful, 100% saint. Jesus here is calling us into community and relationship as Christians. It's not that hard. Does it feel awkward? Is it painful? Yes. It can be at times, but the key starts with grace. If we are forgiven, if we have a God who listens, even after everything that we have done, how is it that we can't do the same? How is it that we can't go when someone has hurt us and let that person know and leave it at that? And if we are the one who has done the transgression and one comes to us to tell us that, how can we not see the face of God in the other? Become vulnerable. Own up to what we have done, as we do with Jesus and God every single day. And every Sunday we verbalize it. Confrontation. I grew up with the understanding it was a bad thing. Confrontation, it's not what you think it is. It is not to foster anger and separation, but it is to foster reconciliation. And we're only able to do this because we have a God who reconciled with us first. Confrontation. It's not what you think it is. Begin to engage in healthy, healthy confrontation. Bringing to light darkness in a healthy way as we are taught by the very one who reconciled us. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us be glad in our Maker and rejoice in our King. Let us praise God's name with dancing and music. Let us bring to God our tithes and offerings. Christ the same through all our stories, pages, our loves and hopes, our failures and our fears, eternal Lord, the King of all the ages, unchanging still, 
amid the passing years. Oh, living word, the source of all creation, who spread the skies and set the stars ablaze. Oh, Christ the same, oh, brought our world salvation. We bring our thanks for all our yesterdays. O oh, Christ the same, the friend of sinners sharing, our inmost thoughts, the secrets none can hide. Still as of old upon your body buried, the marks of love in triumph glorified. O Son of Man, O stooped from heaven, O Prince of Life in all your saving power, O Christ the same, O our hearts are given. We bring our thanks for this, the present hour. O Christ the same, secure within those keeping, our lives and loves, our days and years remain. Our work and rest, our waking and our sleeping, our calm and storm, our pleasure and our pain. O Son of Love, for all our joys and sorrows, for all our hopes when earth shall fade and flee. O Christ the same, beyond our brief tomorrows, we bring our thanks for all that is to be. We bring our thanks for all that is to be. Ever-present God, just as Jesus promised to be among us when two or three are gathered in his name, be among us now, that these offerings may become instruments of your love and justice. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Generous, compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Bless the church, deliver it from evil, and make it holy in every way, that all people may see the light of your salvation through the witness of your faithful servants. Arouse the leaders of your church to prophetic witness, especially presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and Florida Bahamas Synod Bishop Pedro Suarez. Help them to proclaim your justice fearlessly to embody your righteousness sincerely, and to practice your mercy selflessly. Guide the leaders of governments, especially President Donald Trump and Governor Ron DeSantis. Give them sound judgment and merciful hearts, and lead them to do what is right in upholding the common good of all people. Let earth be a gentle home for us. Subdue the violence of storm and earthquake and fires and heal the destruction of the flood waters that have torn through the Caribbean and Louisiana. That life may flourish and every creature rejoice in the goodness of creation. Bless the children and those who care for them. Defend our children, enable them to thrive in mind and body and grow in wisdom and strength. Give them parents and guardians who are faithful in their duty to provide for their needs and guard them from danger. 
Heal those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name in our hearts or out loud before you now. We ask that you uphold those who are able to support them in their need. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. As children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Creator, who made the light, the Christ, who is the light, and the Spirit, who ignites the light within, abide with you and all creation, now and always. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth now to serve your neighbor, to love your enemy, and to embody God's mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us go forth together, living our faith, knowing that everywhere we go, everyone we meet, everything we do, we are God's hands and feet. So let's go! 